dear students let's discuss uh, the essay spoken english and broken english written by george bernard shaw which is prescribed for bcom second semester basic english rani chennamma university belagavi i am rudresh holli assistant professor department of english tcc hebar government first grade college kolsingi before going to the discussion of the essay let's understand about the author the author of this essay is george bernard shaw G. P. Shah. He was born in the year 1856 and died in the year 1950. He is a renowned writer and an excellent public speaker. He was born in the city Dublin, in Ireland, and he moved to London later and started his career as a leading music and theatre critic. He began his literary career as a novelist. He wrote several plays, novels, short stories, and reviews, essays, and prefaces. He was influenced by Ibsen, a Norwegian poet, and he has written plays which are called. as problem plays because they discuss a social problem some of the plays not all the plays and he contributed immensely to english language and theater he was honored with nobel prize honored with nobel prize for his literature in 1925 he is remembered for his plays like pygmalion mrs warren's profession caesar and cleopatra and the doctor's dilemma and candid and about the essay that we are going to discuss now is Uh, since language and the way it is being used in an interesting topic for shaw in this essay he talks about how language english language to be used in our everyday communication the present essay is a transcript of speech delivered by shaw for the lingua franca society in 1927 he explains his views on the way english is being spoken and the way in which it should be spoken the essay is highly rhetorical and persuasive It's a piece of advice Shaw provides to a foreign students who travel in the English speaking countries. It's an outcome of Shaw's experience as a public speaker and as a playwright. He was appointed by the British Broadcasting Corporation BBC as a member of committee whose main aim was to develop a model of correct English in Britain. He opines that there is no correct English but there is a presentable English. which is called good english in the beginning of this speech or in this essay shaw advises to any foreigner who wishes to travel to british commonwealth or america or native britain who speaks provincial dialect that there is no correct english he advises them anybody who wants to travel to america or any commonwealth country or a native uh, britain person a native subject of british uh, britain the great britain and if she speaks provincial dialects and he wants to improve his english he suggests them and he says them that there is no correct english we need to and you know, get rid of that phobia of correct english he wanted to say uh, he says that he is a member of a committee which is established by bbc to investigate the matter how english should be uttered in that committee highly educated members are there there is a poet laureate and a famous actor and speaker but no two member of the committee speak english alike there is no one agreed opinion there is no one agreed opinion about how two simplest and commonest word of english yes and no to be pronounced members of the committee who are selected as models of correct uh, speech speak differently they differ according to the country in which they were born bernard shaw confesses that he himself does not speak english in the same way when he speaks to audience he speaks carefully if he were to speak carefully to his wife at home she would think he was going mad as a public speaker he has to take care that every word he says is heard distinctly at far and large halls containing thousands of people at home he speaks to his wife like mumbling his wife also little careless and so he sometimes has to say what and then he says that we all have company manners and home manners we have we all have two manners company manner and home manners we speak differently in different conditions when we are in house with our family members our way of speaking is different and when we are in office we speak in a different manner there in a different tone so these are 
company manners and home manners according to Jad Parnasha. He suggests to a person who uses English as a second language to be a little informal and out of grammar to be more to be understood in England or in America. By looking at your informal English, the natives thinking that you are a foreigner may help you in your way. And he also says, no foreigner can ever stress the syllables and make the voices rise and fall in questions or in answer, assertion or in denial, in refusal or in consent, in inquiry or information, exactly as a native does. Therefore, the first thing they have to do is to speak with a straight, strong foreign accent and speak broken English, not grammatically correct English. Speaking too well, speaking too correct English, too well, may bring you in difficulty and being informal may ease the things uh, for you. He suggests applying this method in learning any language, not just English. Even among the English people to speak too well is a pedantic affection according to him. Bernard Shah criticizes that uh, it's an insult to the native speaker of English who cannot understand his own language when it is well spoken. So, like that, he suggests the uh, to the uh, you know a foreigner who wants to speak English to speak it in broken way, not a grammatical uh, correct English. And he, as he says, there is no correct English, but there is good English. There is a presentable English. So we need to learn that presentable English, not the correct English. The correct English may create phobia in us. Uh, uh, we as Indians who speak English as a second language, we have phobia of correct English. So he suggests us that we need to avoid this phobia and we just need to speak broken English. And uh, after gradual, uh, uh, after some time, we develop correct English and we will be able to speak it in a better way. So that's what uh, Jared Bernard Shah wanted to say in his speech that delivered to Gramophone in 1927. So let's discuss some of the issues of the essay in the next video if possible. Thank you for listening.